A documentary film that's coming to Maine this week tells the story of the race to Alaska. That is a competition to see which boat can get from Washington State to Alaska the fastest with no motor and no support. Competing in the event is not for the faint hearted and telling the story wasn't easy either. I talked to Zach Carver, the director of the film, which is called The Race to Alaska, about how difficult it was to capture the sights and sounds of this demanding event. It's pretty hard. <laughs> there's, there's a 750 mile race course and the, there's only two checkpoints. So just finding the teams, we have a GPS tracker that keeps track of all of the racers, but even just finding the person in the right place to film and getting there is a, is a challenge. Let's go, race mode. Race to Alaska, there's a starting line in Port Townsend, there's a finish line in Ketchikan, $10,000 for a first prize, and the only rule is that your boat can't have a motor on board. Then you have to add in, of course, like cold weather, stability, rain, et cetera, and, uh, and a shoestring budget. It gets, uh, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot <laughs> to get out there. Just hell broke loose. It was 30 knots upwind for four days straight. It was brutal. It is really tough to shoot on a boat because you're always, you know, you're getting water on the camera lens. The, the, the camera is shaking because of the waves. Uh, you actually, when you're looking through a viewfinder, you often get seasick. What was it like for you and the people you were working with to actually get the images that you needed to make the movie? It was pretty crazy. There's a, we had volunteer helicopters. We had volunteer pilots that would help. Um, drones were a huge component in being able to capture it. Um, I know it's it's a it's a lot of logistics. How much footage did you shoot? The editor that's probably like the biggest challenge. It's less it's, it's a less uh, sexy challenge, but uh, when the editor started this project, he had over seventy thousand individual video clips uh, from five years of, of the race. So just sorting and navigating through that was was a, an epic task. <laughs> Northerly gales were about to hit us for a full week. Gale is around 40 to 50 miles per hour. So yeah, yeah, things like this are scary, but it's okay to be scared. It's a normal human reaction because this is actually quite dangerous. What's absolutely crucial in a story like this is the people. We're all interested in the humans versus nature story. And we like to see the, the fury of the sea and so forth, but we really wanna see the people. And you're lucky because the folks who enter a competition like this tend to be big outsized characters don't they oh yeah it's it's amazing i mean the, the race to alaska you know was a big experiment no one had ever done an engineless race that went this far in such a challenging waterway so the first year it really attracted all kinds better get the red carpet ready get the beers on ice i want them beers to be iced yeah there's a kind of odd mix of like innovation people that want to be like innovative and creative problem solving, but are also very rugged and willing to, to have a lot of like type two fun, like push through a lot of discomfort to, uh, to find something in themselves. So yeah, we had awesome characters that. There's obviously a pretty significant element of risk involved. How dangerous is it to participate in this race? Fortunately, the organizers have never, you know, lost any, anybody. I mean, the success rate is like around 50%. There were decisions made that were dangerous and irresponsible. I love it. I only search for live people. I don't search for bodies. This race is very risky. A big part of their vetting process is to try to get people that are smart enough to quit. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's a 50% success rate. Uh, to, to get to the finish line. But it's there's just a ton of risks. There's bears, there's cold water, there's uh, lack of resources. There's, it, it, it's, it's, an, it's a gnarly experience. It's not just a race. This is an opportunity to, to do that thing and be that person that you always wanted to be. This was clearly a tremendous commitment on your part. I can't imagine how many hundreds and hundreds of hours you put into it. Were you happy with the way the film came out? Yeah, I'm really proud of the film and all the people that put so much work into it. I hear, you know, I've seen it only in the theater a couple of times because of the obvious reasons of the last two years. Um, but, you know, I hear laughs, I hear audible gasps, I hear the kind of audience reaction that I know is making it work. So that's cool. It must be very gratifying for you when you hear viewers gasp at what's going on in the film. Yeah, it makes you realize you did something right. <laughs> 
So how do you feel about those 70,000 video clips that they had to sort through and edit to create this film? Um, that to me is the definition <laughs> of nightmare. <laughs> but hey, look what they got out of yeah. it. Yeah, no, the Holy. film. The film is really cool looking, and you can see The Race to Alaska tomorrow and Sunday at the Lakeside Theater in Rangeley. Next week, it'll be at the Magic Lantern Theater in Bridgeton from Friday to Sunday. It will be shown at the Music Hall in Portsmouth, New Hampshire on Saturday, May 28th, at the Waldo Theater in Walderboro on July 6th, and at the Colonial Theater in Belfast at a date to be determined. You will find those dates and more information on The Race to Alaska on our app and website.